What you are about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you are about to see are not real life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Starsat, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. In the South African Parliament, most days are manic. And for Jacob and Helen, it seems unlikely they'll ever understand each other. You think the president is such fun? You never lost a day in opposition. But today, things are gonna get a little nervous. Why am I in this room? This isn't mine. <gasps> this definitely isn't mine. Ah! Ah! We're switched bodies. My face is so tight. <laughs> I want you to burn all my hats and anything that looks ethnic. <laughs> Yes, we are changing the ANC colors to blue. What if we, like, uh, run into each other? Oh! Ah! Ah! That was a ridiculous idea. Hmm, it really suits you. Murky Monday. Hello and welcome. Welcome. Kamochelo. Siale mamkela. Sonzela. Wamkeleki. Lay. To another state of the puppet nation. Putting their laugh back into. this laughter? This laughter isn't a word. It is now. Eastern Europe remains on a knife edge, with Russia showing more and more might. The question still remains whether NATO will in fact intervene if one of their member states are threatened. I am going to crush Estonia. Oh, I say, that's a bit harsh. Please don't do it, chap. Well, I'm going to. You're gonna stop me? I am. We are sending diplomatic aid. Ooh, diplomats. I'm so scared. Oh, look, 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 just please don't. I really don't fancy another war. I am recording this call. I shall send Estonia a copy so they know what a pussy you are. <laughs> oh, I say that's rotten. Just because I don't fancy it doesn't mean we won't send the troops should push come to Jolly South. Come on over. I have a missile with your name on it. Now look here, Vlad. Don't make me call Barack. Why don't you call Merkel? That big girl tells you what to do anyway, doesn't she? You want me to call Angela? Well, fine. I have her on speed dial. No, 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 wait. I don't like talking to her. She is no fun. Thank goodness that nasty brute is gone. David, did you call me? To get Putin to hang up again? Gosh, no, I, I, well, yes. Some of us are busy running countries, you know. Terribly sorry, Angela. Miss Merkel, uh, your chancellorship, sir. Ma'am. Oh, fiddlesticks. After last week's rather embarrassing defeat to India, the Proteas had to pick themselves up. Rumors are several rather unusual methods of regaining focus were used. Analysts insist that the team are not choking. They were just outclassed on the day. Okay, uh, guys, everyone, uh, let's begin with some synchronized crying. <laughs> Right, good. Okay, now that we've got that uh, out of our systems, you can stop crying. Choke down those subs. Panel. I mean, don't choke. Uh, quick, breathing exercises, okay? Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Repeat. Don't stop breathing, guys. Breathing helps to prevent choking. Breathing is good. And now for a special motivational focus exercise. Okay, guys, listen closely. 
All right, everybody. Be the aware. Okay. Now visualize the opposition in your head. They are approaching you. Open your giant whale mouth and devour them. Okay, just make sure, guys, that you devour them in really, really small chunks so you don't choke. I'm talking to you, Pana. Yes, you. On his return from his trip to the NBA All-Star Weekend, Sports Minister Fakile Mbalulu is with us to share more plans for the future. And a few selfies from the trip? No autographs, please. Minister, <laughs> nice glasses. A small token from my good friend, Beyoncé. She knows how to do real razzmatazz. With the Cricket World Cup underway, was this really the best time to go on this trip? Uh, you see, Deborah. When those boys start winning again, I will start watching them again. But today, I am here to present my plan to bring the NBA to South Africa. Surely we should focus on getting our national sports right? No! Our new national sport is going to be basketball. Forget soccer! Oh dear. We will go forth in triumph on the basketball court under the leadership of the very tall Kobe Bryant. Hey. One man does not a basketball team make. Well spotted, Debra. We will also be taking the springbok forwards to make up the rest of the team. That Victor, you know, is nice and tall. It's not just about being tall, though. I did not bring you here to talk, Kobe. Shut up. Have you thought this through? Of course. Rugby and basketball will be in different seasons. And we kick off with a real Razzmatazz All-Star Weekend of our own featuring... Wait. Let me guess, Beyonce? Uh, how did you know? Why not put a bit of Mac back into your washing days? It's like getting a friend to take care of all your dirty laundry. <laughs> Mac. Mac. Mac, 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 It'll put the spin back into your dirty laundry. For the love of God, man, I am not a bloody miracle worker. Mac, go ahead and try it. And now, it's time for Lonely 24, with your host, Queen of Haters, Contessa of Commenters, Kanye Mba. Hello, and welcome to Lonely 24, the dating show where we match News 24 commenters based on their dislikes. This week, all our contestants think ASCOM is probably run by trained rats. Let's meet our Lonely Hater for this week, Rian. Hi, my name is Rian. And I hate the All Blacks, All Blacks, and Scott O'Brien. Rian, are you ready to meet your haters? Yes! Bring on the hate! <laughs> Hater number one, what is pissing you off the most right this minute? I just looked at a banknote and saw Nelson Mandela. Hate that guy. Hater number two, when's the last time you were happy? My fifth birthday, I got a pink bike. I hate pink now. And hater number three, of all your hates, what is your pet hate? I'd have to say raisins. Oh. Well, Rian, you've heard what they have to say. Are you feeling the hate? Yeah, <clears throat> I'm definitely uh, starting to feel it, can you? But I think we should really crank it up. Well, we're now heading to our quickfire hate round. Haters, we're going to pose one question at a time. All three of you must answer. We've got 45 seconds until Rian makes his choice. Starting now. West song. Diamonds or a gold face friend. Pink. Happy birthday. West TV show. The news. Uh, generations. Ah, uh, I love them. West habit. Biting my nails. Biting other people's nails. Plagiarism. We're going to have to stop there, as that's all the hatred normal people can tolerate in a week. Rian, here's a reminder of what your date package entails. You and your lucky hater will be whisked away into a minibus taxi to a family restaurant where a TV close to your table will play footage of your favorite rugby team losing badly. Your ex-partners will be passing your table at regular intervals to pass judgment on you. Imagine how much you are going to have to hate tonight. I'm going to hate it so much. Okay, Rian, which lucky hater will get to join you for this awful night? Oh, 
Look on you. I hate hater number one. And I hate hater number two. But um, how do you girls feel about a threesome? How dare you choose both of them and not me? I hate you. I hate them more. Bitch, yeah. Join us next week when we match up people who train togaloshes to attack their enemies. Oh my god, it's gonna be amazing. Good night! I'm like a vessel, and God has chosen me to be the voice and the connector. I'm like a what? Come on now, how can you be me and want to be someone else? Seriously, Justice, are you okay? Did you bang your head during the break? What's going on? No, no, I'm trying out the new Kanye West confidence generating app. I think it's good to boost their self-esteem. Let me see. I'm so credible and so influential and so relevant that I will change things. <laughs> well, that's true. Thanks. You see, it's working already. <sighs> The remains of Star heroes J.B. Marx and Moses Kotani were repatriated safely from Russia. Zuma heaped praise on Russia for their assistance. In fact, he works pretty lyrical about Russia in general. He really seems to admire them. Mm. So, Jacob, when I say power, you say... Power! Louder, Jacob! Louder! Power! Better, better! What do we do with our opponents? We don't let them win. We crush them! We crush them! Excellent! Um, <laughs> when you say crush them, <laughs> you don't mean like uh, that opponent of yours uh, who got shot last week, right outside your office? I'm not saying I had any part in names of skilling, but it was convenient. Oh, uh, How is that Malema fellow? You have to be in parliament next week, no? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> yes. And uh, that Malema fellow, is he still alive? Uh, yes, yes. Still so much to learn. <laughs> In a statement to the public, SACP General Secretary Blade and Zamande called for the government to hold firm against the EFF's proto-fascist behavior. Was it proto-fascist or neo-fascist? But in the noise that EFF is making, will the SACP be heard? Yes! Nice megaphone. Thank you! It's red! Ah, what's it for? Other than being excruciating... We need our voices to be heard. This populist behavior is not acceptable. They cannot dominate the headlines and Twitter feeds every day. Not every day, Deborah. It cannot stand. I'll tell you what I cannot stand. It's that megaphone. You don't think it's effective? Oh, it's effective, all right. Will you please put that thing down now? No, people will hear me when I say that proto-fascist arrogant neophyte does not deserve such adulation. Shut the f*** up. Okay. U.S. President Barack Obama spoke at the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday in Selma, Alabama. The president's speech marked the anniversary of a brutal crackdown on the human rights movement. Uh, unfortunately, I am now here to issue a correction. A correction? Yes. In my speech, I said that nothing could be more American than the coming together of the civil rights movement. It was a very moving speech. Thank you. But based on further research, I now need to present a list of 10 things that are in fact more American, if I may say. Sure, I mean, you're Barack Obama. Yes, I am. 10 things that are more American than civil rights. Drum roll, please. Number 10, the right to bear firearms, especially in a Target store. Number nine, being on death row, especially for blacks. We have some world records there. Number eight, the World Series, which only we enter, is definitely more American than civil rights. Tied for seventh are Guantanamo Bay, the Kardashians, school shootings, Coca-Cola, country music, the Statue of Liberty, and obesity. This is a pretty shitty list. Sucks to be American. You don't have anything fun on there. Fourth of July, Thanksgiving. Aha, uh -huh, yes, here's Thanksgiving at number four. A national holiday commemorating the colonization of the land and eating pie. Mm-mm. Number three, Jerry Springer. 
Number two, invading countries with oil. And finally in at number one, Bill Cosby. What? Huh, just kidding, me. I'm more American. I'm the president and you're not. Wow, hush. Robert Mugabe celebrated his 91st birthday last week. Surprisingly, presents came from all over the world. Including a gift of his very first car, a 1953 Ford Zephyr, which has been on display in a museum. President Mugabe, I never took you for a boy racer. Are you allowed to drive at your age? Of course, of course. But first, I want to see how fast it goes around my track. Some people say his middle name is Hippopotamus, and that he owns 72 Neil Armstrong figurines. All we know is he's called the Steeg. I actually think we might be related. You and the Steeg? We are both immortal and idolized by many. Clearly genetic. Come, Steeggy. Let's go hit the hammerhead. Hey, Stiggy, Stigmeister, hello. Open this bloody British door. Welcome to Hard Shout, where I ask hard questions in a hard tone of voice, sitting in hard chairs. Today I'm joined by Patricia DeLille, who remarkably isn't dressed like a minstrel or a gangster. It's wonderful to be here, uh, Deborah. You know, I actually had a style. Mayor DeLille, what went wrong? Things are great, Deborah. I'm making my mark in the DA. I just, I, I, you used to be a bit of a role model, you know, when you used to shout at people over the arms deal. You know, that was ages ago. You know, I've moved on from there. I found that a more holistic approach is called for. Holistic? God, who still uses this kind of Cape Town crap jargon? No, seriously, what happened? Was it burnout? Was it just the sheer embarrassment of the independent Democrats? All of those decisions have shaped my political career and brought me to where I am now, Deborah. Was it that drug problem of yours we all saw the billboards of? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't really have a drug problem, my dear. It was a metaphor. It wasn't really me, you know. It was. I know what a metaphor is, but really. Patricia DeLille, are you on drugs? No, of course not. I am perfectly content with reality. You mean reality, like hiding Cape Town's poor from tourists, pretending gang warfare isn't your problem, banishing Twitter Never Yard from existence, endorsing the beating up of buskers and the evictions of the poor. I mean, really, this, really? Every job has its positives and its negatives, dear, but I can't deny that. In fact, you know, it would be a little two-faced of me to try. Don't you get angry about anything anymore. Where's the fire? The passion. Where's that firebrand PAC Patricia we knew? Where is she, huh? I'm sorry, Deborah, but I'm not shouting anymore. So there you have it. Sometimes even the hardest shouters give up shouting. Are we still rolling? But shut your mouth, a push. How can you talk to me like that on the fucking TV? So, uh, I really think that this is going to be uh, my year. Yeah. It looks like my daughter has got herself a real go-getter. Mm? So, Mfanawam, tell me, what exactly do you do for a living? Well, uh, uh, who I am is... Uh, uh, I'm a doom, uh, I'm a cockroach, uh, I'm a cockroach killer, <laughs> that's it, I'm a cockroach killer. <laughs> mm. Don't spell doom for your country, get a career you can be proud of with careering24.com. Did you see Trevor Noah's taking over from Jon Stewart on The Daily Show? Yeah, it's a great thing for South African comedy. Mm, and black male presenters. Mm, we are so hot right now. Even if you do say so yourself. Oh, don't be jealous, Deborah. Trevor and I are the bomb. 
The Roads Must Fall campaign gains momentum as the EFF has joined the call to pull down the statues of Rhodes as well as other apartheid symbols. The EFF president Julius Malema joins us tonight and as... That's not Julius. <laughs> Dr. Death, uh, you're here, why? Hello, Deborah. Justice, I'm here to offer my services to the public. No thanks. Mm-hmm. Where's Julius? Mm-hmm. I keep hearing complaints about this Rhodes fellow, and if he must fall, I know humane ways to do just that. Doctor's my name. Death is my but game. But, Dr. Death, I don't Just think point you... me to him and he'll be gone in a flash. Humanely, of course. Rhodes is already dead. We're talking about his statue. Already dead? Then why did you call me? We didn't. Wait, you're not talking about Jaunty Rhodes? No, we're talking about Cecil John Rhodes. Seriously, where's Julius? That Rhodes is my hero. A true role model for me. A great man and a master of death. Someday, they'll build statues of me right next to him. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Rhodes, what a guy. (laughs) How does he keep getting into the building? With the UK elections fast approaching, Prime Minister David Cameron seems to be um, losing it. He has laid in to the Labour leader and also refused to shake hands with an audience after an election debate. Isn't that what politicians do, you know, shake hands? It's a load of hogwash. I- Mr Cameron had to leave the studio due to Ed Miliband. Apparently Mr Miliband was very friendly and Mr Cameron was a pompous ass. Can't imagine that. I did an entirely fictitious and vicious attack on Mr. Cameron's character. In general, the run-up to the election seems tense. Well, I... Mr. Cameron has been practicing meditation exercises and morning affirmations, so he's doing splendidly. Totally calm. Can I very well speak for myself, cringing little worm? Mr. Cameron has an urgent meeting now and will have to leave immediately. Off we go. Hmm, sometimes it's just nice to know that other countries have uh, messed up politicians too, you know? Totally. He may be the leader of one of the most powerful nations in the world, but it seems Vladimir Putin is only now coming to grips with the internet. A number of tech developers met with the leader to explain to him how it works. Did you know, Debra, that I can find the cheapest way to make missiles on the web? Well, I've never personally searched for missile deals, but I guess... I found a group one. Buy 100, get 98 free! In all seriousness, is Russia behind in the internet game? Also, there are places you can buy Russian brides! Oh boy. And the most important thing I have found on the internet... Cat videos? Don't be silly, Justice. I am a world leader. Cat videos? Honestly. No! Sorry, I I didn't mean to... It is this video of a baby panda sneezing! See, Justice? Not cats. Have you seen it? The baby panda sneezes! Uh, yeah, I... I, am. Um... I'll email it to you. I have email! Well, I guess this is one way to delay the next world war. <laughs> this is incredible. Look, it is a panda, and it is sneezing like human person. Allegations that Helen Zilla is a bully and should step down from DA leadership are once again doing the rounds. But Zilla shows no signs of paying any attention to the people criticizing her. Nothing new there. Why would I back down to my critics? I mean, me? A bully? Did you ever hear such nonsense? Uh, uh, Pr- Premier Zilla, you're you facing the wrong way. Premier Zilla? I'm sorry, Justice. I'm obeying DA party guidelines. I've been sent to the naughty corner. Why? What did you do? I made Wilmot give me his chain of meeting because it was more comfy. Sorry, what? I made Wilmot give me a chain of meeting because it was more comfy. Apparently that's abuse of powers. What was that you were saying about not in any way being a bully? Hi, 
Bible. So that was this week's dose of politics, performers, and, 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 hmm. Justice, and, say goodbye. Uh, goodbye. I must think of a, of a thing beginning with a P. You know, politics, performers, and uh, maybe polyglots? No, no. Piranhas? No, definitely not. Uh, but porcupines, porcupines! The, there weren't any porcupines. There should have been porcupines. Porcupines are cool. True. Pelamun. Pirates. 